Well, hi to everyone watching. Actually, I should say g'day. How about g'day y'all? <laughs> I hope all y'all are watching. See, I'm an Australian trying to act as an American. Did, did that work? I don't know. Y'all will tell us if it worked or not. Uh, okay, we'll have to figure that one out later. But this is Greg, who is the CEO of pureflix.com. That's right, Ken. And we have a great relationship with Pureflix. In fact, our videos are on Pureflix and eventually hundreds of them probably 500 or so I believe will be up there on Pure Flix and then all our future videos as well even some live programming yep. uh, so this is a way in which people can actually not only find Answers in Genesis videos but also family friendly faith friendly movies documentaries yep. TV series tell us just a little bit about Pure Flix before we answer questions. We actually ask people to send in to us the questions they want to ask you and want to ask me. And I'm going to ask you all. Ones. I got them all here. I'm going to ask you the hard you got ones. Some good Is that ones. okay? Yeah, sure. But tell us a little bit about Pure Flix, first of all. Yeah, you said it. I mean, we're about faith, family, and fun video streaming to devices from telephones to tablets to TVs and computers. It's a subscription service. Uh, in fact, the New York Times called us a Netflix for Christians. We've got lots of good programming, movies, TV shows, and of course, the answers in Genesis content. And you know, Netflix for Christians, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Uh, because it really is. You know, I was, oh, I was so appalled when we actually had some of our people started to review Bill Nye's series mm. on Netflix. Yes. It was sexually perverse. Mm. Uh, I mean, it was, of course, evolutionary, uh, very much so. Uh, but we're seeing more and more people who are concerned at what their children see, their teenagers see. And just as people come to us and, and say to us, can, can you recommend, you know, good colleges and so yep. on? Uh, people want to be able to find movies and TV series and documentaries uh, that are family friendly faith friendly and that's what you do you put them all that's together exactly right and you don't have to worry when your kids sit down in front of the pure flicks screen you don't have to worry about them seeing a good thing here and a bad thing there it's all faith family and fun programming and as i tell people the subscription rate really for less than what it would cost them to purchase one dvd that's a right. month they get all of answers and genesis videos let alone everything else you have yep. uh, there on the pureflix.com site and uh, many many of our supporters now subscribe to pureflix and i encourage everyone uh, to do that and we need services like this in our culture today as we see moral relativism permeating the culture and permeating yep. uh, hollywood permeating the entertainment scene that's right and uh, we really appreciate the support and working with answers in genesis you know it's like anything else what you put into your mind what you put into your body is what comes forth you got to put in the good if you want the good out. And we're hoping that we're part of that good. Well, we're going to do a series of Facebook Lives talking about uh, Pure Flix over the, uh, the coming weeks and yep. so on. But we promised to answer people's questions. And uh, so I'm going to start off with this one. And then we'll sort of go backwards and forwards. And okay. you can read the questions that pertain to me. I'll read the ones that pertain to you. And we'll see how we answer them. All right. And I'll tell myself, try to keep your answers short. OK, <laughs> did I hear myself? Keep your answer short. Okay, I'll try to I'll try to do that. Uh, so you all will have to tell us <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, so the first uh, question here: What are the odds of an AIG and Pure Flix documentary series? Hey, why not? I mean, there's I like great stories to be told everywhere you go, and mm -hmm. the AIG and Pure Flix working together are both great stories in and of themselves. Maybe we should. Hey, I tell you what: We will talk to our audiovisual department. We'll talk to PureFlix, that is a great idea. I think we should do it. Let's look at that for the future. All right, okay, it's on the so list. Okay, so there's the answer to that one. All right, so uh, Greg. I'm gonna ask you something. Oh, okay. All I'll right. switch it. Okay. You can so, do you know, out of the mouths of babes mm -hmm. come important questions. So we have a question here. A child asked, if God made us, then who made God? Ah, that's a good question. You know, I actually had a little boy come up to me on stage at a conference and he was about 10 years old and he said, Mr. Ham, who made God? Ah. And I said to him, well, son, if somebody made God, you don't have to have a bigger God who made God, right? And he said, yes, sir. I said, now you've got a problem because you have to have a bigger, bigger God who made the bigger God who made God. Yep. 
Uh, right, son? Yes, sir. Well, I said, now you got a problem. Who made the bigger, bigger God? You have to have a bigger, bigger, bigger God to make the bigger, bigger God to make the big God to make God, right? Yep. Yes, sir. I said, now you have a problem. He said, I know. <laughs> I said, who made the bigger, bigger, bigger God? You have to have a bigger, 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 bigger God to make the bigger, bigger, bigger God to make the bigger, bigger God to make the bigger God to make God, right? Yes, sir. Well, now you got a problem. I know. And I said, see, you keep going back, getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, the only thing that makes sense, you've got to have the biggest God of all, Amen. the God of the Bible, Amen. the infinite creator God, in the beginning God, the Alpha and Omega, the one who's outside of time, the one who created all things. Does that make sense, son? Yes, sir. That's right. The biggest God of all. And you know what? Matter can't just exist by itself. Where did it come from? Where did energy come from? Where did life come from? Matter can't produce life. The Bible is right. The very first verse, in the beginning, God created. So there's my short answer to it. There you go, love so it. So there you are. Okay, so I got a question for you then. Uh, somebody said, uh, where do you see Pure Flix five years from now? How fast is the membership growing? I mean, are people wow. really interested in yeah. a faith friendly, yeah. family friendly, people uh, recognize Netflix, people you know, recognize the need equivalent. in this culture. Yeah, and they are, we've been blessed with very fast growth since we launched just a couple of years ago. We pray that that growth continues. And as long as we keep delivering the right kind of content, that faith and family friendly content, we'll see that growth. But people are really gravitating towards it. You know, I hear things from customers such as, Finally, I can watch TV without having to have my finger ready on the mute button, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Finally, I can watch TV with my kids without being ready to slide my hand in front of their eyes. Right. That's the type of service that we're providing and people are responding to it. We hope that that will continue to grow nicely as we build out the service. And the great thing is with our relationship now too, all of our Answers in Genesis videos and future videos. That's right. And even some of our live programming, our really popular Answers News program and so on, uh, will be on there. In fact, we're archiving the Answers News programs on Pure Flix right now. Yep. And, uh, you know, some people have said to me, well, it's, it's not as big as Netflix, but remember, uh, there's a broad way and a narrow way, Yeah. right? And, and we're in the narrow way. And so it, it's never going to be as big as the world. And we understand that's the same for, you know, the Ark Encounter. People say, well, you'll never be as big as Disney. I don't expect to be as big, as, right. big as Disney. But you know what we need to do? What we need to do is to be faithful to what God has called us to do and to provide the best we can to help people uh, in, in regard to God's word. And that's what you're doing. And the exciting and, thing about it in the technology world, just as you're doing in the physical world here, you know, with technology, we can put the Answers in Genesis content right on that phone, which means you can take it with you when you're on a bus or you're standing outside an amusement line or ARC encounter waiting to get in, right? You can be watching the latest right there. That technology usage is what will really open up the path to share more and more with people. We can actually get the message out around the world in a way we've never done before. That's right. Which is really exciting. That's right. So, okay, that was my question to you. So you've got to read one of the questions to me now. All right, so um, here's a question. You all have so many resources and I love it. To some though, it could be overwhelming with so many. What one book is the most popular, best-selling one to read alongside of the Bible? If you could pick it, what would it be? Well, here's what I say at Answers in Genesis. Our textbook is the Bible. Other than the Bible, the textbook of our ministry happens to be a book that a guy called Ken Ham wrote. Hmm. And who that uh, is. it's called The Lie Evolution. In fact, I wrote it back in 86, was published in 1987. And it is our biggest selling publication, but it really is the message of our ministry. Mm -hmm. How important the book of Genesis is, how foundational it is to the rest of the Bible, how Genesis 1 to 11 is like the foundation for the walls and the roof of the house, which is the rest of the Bible, for all of our doctrines, uh, for the gospel, and how important it is to stand on God's word from the very beginning and not add man's word to God's word and undermine the authority of the mm -hmm. word of God. So it's called the lie evolution. And actually, our biggest selling creation apologetics books are called the Answers Books, where we have five Answers Books that contain 160 of the most asked questions mm. that people ask today mm. uh, that uh, cause them to question whether you can trust the Bible and we give the answers. Yeah. And uh, they understand, wow, we, we really can trust God's word right from the very beginning. So let me ask uh, you a question here. Uh, somebody asked about closed captions. Do you have uh, closed captioning on your movies and yeah. TV series and so on? Yeah, speaking of the technology and technical issues, 
You know, most people don't recognize it, but closed captioning costs about $2.50 per minute to create and to implement in the system. So on a catalog like pureflix.com, that represents well over a million and a half dollar investment. I'm happy to say over 90% of our programming has closed captioning on it. However, there's a trick. The trick is right now, the closed captioning is available via your browser. So if you're using your cell phone or your tablet or a computer, use the browser and you can enable closed captioning. Uh, okay. We're working behind the scenes right now from an engineering perspective to make sure that all the apps, the standard iPhone app or the Android app, will also support support closed captioning, but that won't happen until early next year. So when I watch PureFlix on my TV and I have the app there that I, I bring up and open up PureFlix, closed captioning is not available Today, on that Today the apps on that TV are not supporting closed captions. But they will be. Yes, but if you watched it on your browser, either from a computer or on right. your tablet, and use that to broadcast to your TV, okay. you could see the closed caption. We're hard at work at it. This is an important thing for us, an important feature to bring to people so that everyone can enjoy the word directly. We're working to make that happen. And early next year, all of our apps will. Okay, time for a question for me. Okay, so why will Jesus still have certain scars in heaven? Hmm, that's one of those questions that uh, we don't know for sure and don't know how to that's answer. Right. You know, let me say this, we know that the resurrected Jesus showed those scars to Doubting Thomas. Yes. Now, he was in a resurrected body, right? So it would have been a perfect body. Yep. But he allowed those scars still to be there to show that, yes, I have risen from the dead. Maybe, even in heaven, uh, Jesus will have those scars there as a reminder to us all the time that mm. he's our savior. He mm. stepped into history to die on the cross and be raised from the dead. But I don't know for sure. That's one of those I don't know quite answers. You wait. know what I mean? We but it's to interesting to see. think about, isn't it? It is. It, it is absolutely interesting is. to think about. So somebody said here, I'm glad you're teaming up. Uh, you're open to other creation ministries providing materials as well. Absolutely. You know, in, in the business world, we've been taught to compete with one another and you compete left and right all the time. But in this space, I think the answer is collaboration. The partnership that we have between PureFlix and Answers in Genesis is really a collaboration to do good, to follow the mission that we both have. Lots of other ministries share that mission. We should find ways to collaborate together. So yes, we're absolutely open to that. You know, when you think about the forces in our culture today uh, that really are against Christianity, and we see that happening more and more in our Western world, yes. if uh, Christians don't work together in some ways, um, we're not going to be as effective yep. in the culture. And I love to see Christians working together. Obviously, you know, there are sometimes theological differences and sometimes the chasms are too wide. I understand that. But when we can, we should be working together uh, for the kingdom, I believe. And yeah. that's what we're doing, working that's together. That's exactly right. That's uh, exactly right. For, for the kingdom. So, all right, so I'm going to ask question? you a question. Um, and it's, we're here we're at trying the, to answer all your questions that you sent in. So, we've got a few we're more. We're here yet. at the Ark Encounter, so a Noah's Ark question seems appropriate. One of the uh, Facebook fans wrote in What would prevent Noah's Ark from melting when the volcanoes were erupting during the flood? Actually, we believe there would have been a lot of volcanic eruption during the flood, but the whole world was covered with water. And obviously, the Bible says it was water, it wasn't steam, so we know it was liquid water, right? So we know it wasn't at the temperature that yep. would, that would uh, cause a problem for the ark. The ark was wooden anyway, it wouldn't melt. If, the, if it was too hot, it'd start to burn, I guess, right? right? But then right. the water would put the fire out, right? So, <laughs> yep. so anyway, actually, we do believe that because of all the volcanic eruptions, warm water at the end of the flood, cool land, a lot of ash in the atmosphere from volcanic dust, yeah. you get a lot of evaporation, and then you'd also get precipitation in the form of snow and ice. It actually generated an ice age. And there actually, it's the flood that explains the ice age after the flood. And then as temperatures start to uh, get back into equilibrium and so on, uh, what happens is the ice age starts to recede, which is why climates change. Actually, if people don't understand the flood and the ice age, they won't understand climate change. How's that? There you go. There you there go. You and you know, you've got a lot of video and written material about this, much of which is on pureflix.com to, to poke at it more. We do. And uh, a lot of the material, in fact, we have videos on pureflix.com dealing with the ice age, yep. dealing with the flood. 
And if you go up to the third deck of the Ark, there's yeah. a great exhibit in there dealing with that very issue. There you go. So there we are. So, oh, is it a time for me to ask you a question then? It is yours. Uh, so um, someone said, will there be a God's not dead four? <laughs> well, there's always a God's not dead, right? Yeah, Whether exactly. there'll be a number four or not, we'll see. But, you know, I think the, the fact that there's been three in this series, the most recent one came out in theaters earlier this year, a light, God's not dead, a light in the darkness, says that this is a theme that resonates with people. And the idea that God's not dead and to be able to stand and be able to say that is an important theme that we have to think about. We know that it resonates with audiences. We know what the culture says about God. We need to be able to stand up and say, hey, God's not dead. Exactly. I think I saw uh, a cartoon once where it said Nietzsche, you know, that uh, pagan philosopher who said um, that God is dead. And, yeah. and it says God, Nietzsche is dead and had, yeah. had his uh, gravestone there. A reminder that we all die yes, because of sin. But we're made in the image of God, so we have a soul that's going to live forever. And God wants us to live with him, him forever. God's not dead. Our bodies may die because of sin. But God's not dead. In fact, Jesus, when he died on the cross, he didn't stay dead. He was raised from the dead. And anyone who can be raised from the dead has ultimate power. Yeah. And that's who God is. You know, and it's so easy nowadays to, to hear from people that God, yeah, it's a side, right? You have to be strong and step forward and proclaim that he's not. And so being able to say those words, God's not dead, and recognize the responsibility we have as Christians to speak about that, I think it's an important one. Okay, one more each. All right. Your turn Fair to enough. Ask me. All right. Okay. All right. So if I'm going to take one more, how about this one? Do you have Ark Encounter exhibits that might possibly travel around to different museums around the country? Okay. In answer to that question, I would say this. We're not going to take the Ark Encounter out around the country. People across the country need to come to the Ark there Encounter. There you go. That's why we build it right here. You know why it's in Kentucky? We're within a one day drive of two thirds of America's population. Two thirds of the population. Two thirds of Americans can wow. get here within a one day drive. Why would we want to take it out there yeah, when it's yeah. easier for yeah. them to come here, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. And then they see the life size art yeah. and all the exhibits inside. And then of course people come from all over the world and even many people come from California, which is another country anyway, right. isn't it? You know, it is. Or three countries, I'm not you. sure. But anyway, <laughs> uh, over there on the West. But uh, no, we encourage people to come to the Ark. Like we see, even today, as we're standing here, uh, we see all these people pouring yes. in uh, to the Ark encounter. And I got to uh, tell you, the size of the Ark when you're here, it's just mesmerizing. Seeing something in a portable display would not make the same impact as seeing it in person. So is there a series on uh, pureflix.com called Revelation Road? There is. And someone said, are you ever going to finish this series? My kids <laughs> loved it and love for it to finish. We're I, always I, working I, on I have to be. I have to be honest and admit to you, I haven't seen the series. So can you tell me what she's talking about or so he it's, is it's, talking about? We have multiple types of series. We have uh, Revelation Road is more of an end times type of series. Uh, we have series such as, well, we have one called an Hope Opera. Some okay. people would say a soap opera, but it's a hope opera, hope opera. all the okay. drama and the okay. like, but from a Christian viewpoint. Uh, it's called Hilton Head Island. We have another series that's a family comedy series called Malibu Dan, the Family Man. And you know, the catch is when you produce content and it's a hit, immediately people want more. Want more. Yeah. We just launched the second season of Hilton Head Island and immediately we were being asked, when's the next one? Right. So Revelation Road, it's a good series. A lot of people enjoy it. We're working on all kinds of ideas. Maybe to something ones. down the road. There you go. <laughs> Playing well, off that revelation. Well, Greg, it's been great to be with you. And we'll do uh, some more Facebook Lives, too, talking about Pure Flix, the relationship we have with Pure Flix. So I want to end off by encouraging people, if you don't subscribe to Pure Flix, pureflix.com, I want you to tell them how they can subscribe and the subscription fee per yep. month. And I think they can have a trial, can't they, yep, for yep, a month? Yep. You can tell them about that. Yep. But the subscription fee, I always tell people this. Look, Answers in Genesis are going to have all of our videos. I think there are about 500 of them yeah. and then future ones and live programming yeah. on PureFlix for the cost of less than purchasing one DVD right. a month. They can get all of Answers in Genesis right. videos, let alone the wealth of info, the incredible amount of information yep. 
uh, the videos, the series, you know, the movies that you have. So tell them yep. how they can subscribe. Yeah, so this is simple. It's pureflix.com. We offer a one month free trial. So you sign up for the free trial. You can cancel at any time. If you decide you stick, and most of our folks enjoy PureFlix and they stick around. It's $10.99 a month or $99 for a whole year. And the first thing you'll see when you log in, about a third of the way down the page, is Answers in Genesis content. So you can check out all of the Answers in Genesis content when you're at PureFlix.com. So there we are, PureFlix.com. And it's been great talking to you. And thank you for those who sent in those questions. And I hope the fun. answers were satisfactory for you. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Let's do it again. All right.